Welcome back. This is tutorial movie number six, phase two. I assume you've already done tutorial movie number five, monitor and react. If you haven't done so already, launch the game and load the save game tutorial phase one achieved. We ended the last movie with the securing of the Steinbrook objective. Note, the objective icon now has a green border around it and its entry in the objective list is also highlighted in green. The objective receives achievement points for both occupation and completion. From now on we will start receiving points for occupying that objective, provided we have someone there. The little achievement box next to the objective will start to fill up over time as points are accumulated. Now we could wait until the 51st and the 318th have deployed on the far bank and are in their final reorg before ordering the 35th Tank Battalion into the attack on Lomasvila. But one of the good principles to adhere to is concurrent activity. We want to try and get the 35th on the move as quickly as possible while these guys are deploying. So the time to issue orders is now. First things first though, select B Company from the 35th Tank Battalion, now Overwatch Group, and hit the reattach button. This will reassign it to the 35th Tank Battalion Headquarters. If we double click the 35th Tank Battalion, this will open its order of battle display and you can now see B Company is under command. Select 35th Tank Battalion Headquarters. We can do that either by clicking on the map over here or by selecting it in the order of battle window. Hit the A key for the attack, hold down the shift key, click just north of the Steinbrook objective to place the FUP, release the shift key and place the final objective in the center of Lomas Vila. And that's about right, we want to make sure that we cover the bulk of the area here. We can leave the task options virtually as is for the moment. Note that 35th Tank Battalion doesn't have any organic indirect fire units, so we don't need to check the artillery direct support only. There aren't any crossings there, so we don't need to worry about the secure crossings checkbox either. However, we want to coordinate the assault with a preparatory bombardment. We're going to order the 22nd Field Artillery Battalion to bombard Lomas Vila. We want the artillery to last long enough to be able to disrupt and suppress the enemy on the objective, say about 10 minutes. And we want it to lift just as the assault troops are getting too close to the objective, i.e. within the safety zone of the bombardment. I reckon that the artillery will probably have to lift as the assault troops get to around halfway at this position here. So we need to determine how long it's going to take to move to the forming up place, then how long it's going to take to deploy into assault formation in the FUP. That will give us our start time for the assault, otherwise known as the H hour. We then need to estimate how long it's going to take to move from the FUP to the objective in the assault. Then we can take half that duration and we know what time the artillery needs to lift and then we can take 10 minutes off that and we know what time it starts. Select the 35th Battalion, Unit Quickest Path Tool, click on the FUP, note the time 23 minutes allow another 15 minutes for the 
forced to form up into a salt formation and that makes a total of 38 minutes. However, there is a risk that the force could be uh, interdicted on its way either from direct fire from these units here or from indirect fire, enemy mortars and artillery hitting it as it moves. So let's allow a buffer and say that the total amount of time will be one hour. Double click to end the tool, select the attack order icon. We need to set the assault at time so uncheck the auto and we're going to add one hour so single left click on the hour button makes it 0949. Select the uh, quickest motorized path tool, click on the FUP, click on the objective and note the duration is estimated to be 9 minutes. So say around 10, half of that would be 5. So now we know that our artillery needs to lift or end 5 minutes after the start of the assault. So in other words at 09.54. And we take 10 minutes from that and we know that it starts at 09.44. Double click to end the tool. Before we issue the bombardment order, note that the Intel reports currently are showing all reports. If we go down to the Intel filter, we can see that here. Click on it once and that will show none. Another time it will show current. Note, all we have current information about, i.e. within the last five minutes, is the Stug company. We do know there are other reports around, but they're older reports, and these are indicated by the hollow black squares. Click the report again and we see recent, i.e. within the last hour. As you can see, currently we only have recent information on just the forward edge of the town. And this is the area we need to focus our bombardment. We'll reset the intel back to all. Select the 22nd Field Artillery Battalion, hit the B key, click in the center of the uh, town and we'll just move that to the forward edge here. Set its start to 09 and hold the control key down and left click to increment by one. Now we have 0944, it's going to end at 0954 and we're right to go. So, congratulations, now you've coordinated your first attack. You don't need to coordinate attacks, but they do provide effective means by which you can maximise the firepower and the arrival of forces on the objective. I'd just like to mention about reserves. At the moment, we've committed our reserve battalion, the 35th tank. All our other forces are committed to some particular task. So we don't technically have a reserve. However, the 51st and the 1st 318th will shortly consolidate the objective, do their final reorg, and then be available for retasking. We'll probably leave the 318th to defend the crossing. There are still enemy units in the vicinity which may try and sneak back in and we'll need to defend it as we need to secure this for passage for our reserves and also because it's a victory objective. But that will leave us the 51st available to act as a reserve. 
you should also consider what's going to happen next once you've taken Lomas Vila. If you check your objectives, we will achieve Lomas Vila ahead of schedule before it's it's uh, due to due time. The next objective is Bretfield Crossroads. If we double click that it will take us to it. We'll just zoom out and get a bit of context here. As you can see it's some three kilometers further north. It's not due to be activated until 0300 on day two, i.e. Uh, over half a day away. But that doesn't stop you from trying to achieve it beforehand. Doing so would also cut off the likely enemy withdrawal from Lomasvila. So it would serve both purposes. One, to stem what is likely to be a flood of enemy units fleeing northwards to escape the onslaught from the 35th tank. And at the same time, it would set you up nicely to secure this objective ahead of schedule and provide a springboard for the final offensive onto St. Vic. Also, remember from our briefing that there was a report of an enemy armoured column approaching from the west. Securing Bretfield denies them the most likely approach down towards Steinbrook. However, there is another approach, and that is at the crossing here at Nidengen. So that is possibly another task for you to consider. Securing this crossing here, even with only a small force, would provide early warning and delay any enemy attempt to cross the river at this location. So, thinking ahead and looking at likely enemy reactions, we've identified three possible tasks for future action. One, defending the Steinbrook crossing. Two, securing Bretfield. And three, securing the Niedengen crossing. We can't do anything about those just yet and won't be able to until the first 3 18th and the 51st have finished their attack. So, our next trigger is when the 51st and the 3 18th finish their attack. Another potential trigger is if we see any enemy here resisting the assault. We could order B battery to do a direct fire task against them. So those are the two things we need to pay attention to. It's now time to run the game. Hit the F1 key to show task information in the unit information box. Uh, set the uh, Intel filter to recent. Hit the space bar to start the game running. Note that the 51st headquarters is moving up into the reorg position as the rest of the units reorg at the objective. It's getting heavily bombarded here. We just must check on that. It's still okay. And that's as well, otherwise that would have delayed them uh, in their reorg position. Note that the 35th tank is on the move. The 318th is now reorging. We may just check on its cohesion level. Hit F6, hit it again, and that shows. Oh, let's stop here for a second. Now, we've just received a message saying that the 35th Tank Battalion Headquarters has slipped its attack task by 24 minutes. That means it's delayed the assault at time by 24 minutes. 
obviously because it's not progressing as well as it had originally planned. Now, we have a coordinated task here, so you need to change the time for the start of your bombardment by 24 minutes so that it stays in coordination. And this has to be done manually. So we just hit the uh, Q key to bring up the fire support tab, it's a shortcut. Select the 22nd and we'll just select its order icon and we can see that its start is scheduled for 0944. So we need to increase it by 24 minutes, so that's uh, 5 minute increments. We just select the button 5 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we'll roll back 1 by hitting the control key and right, arrow, right mouse. And we have it set for 10.08. Now just to confirm, we'll select the 35th tank and select its order icon and we have it assaulting at 10.13 so five minutes before that should be 10.08 and I believe that is what we have indeed set it to yes so we're now back in coordination and everything's synced so let's proceed on we'll just hit the F1 key again uh, to show that all the tasks are fine F6 again to go back to cohesion and the point I was trying to make was that the 318th is an infantry unit. Infantry forces tend to get more disorganized when doing an assault than motorized forces. Now the reason for that is that it's easy for men to get separated and it takes them longer to get back in touch. They don't have as many radios um, within their unit as the motorized elements do and it generally uh, takes them longer to do things. At the moment these, these units here are quite disorganized. You can see they're current cohesion level is only 60 percent uh, which is uh, barely good enough and um, these this unit will definitely need time to reorg at the objective however note the 51st battalion it on the other hand is in pretty good shape its cohesion is near max and uh, the uh, the force there effectively could be given its order uh, now and that's not such a bad idea. Currently the 318th is over the other side of the river and could easily secure that objective by itself. So we could give the 51st its order uh, to advance. So let's do that now. Select, select the 51st, hit the M key for move, so holding the shift key down, click on the track junction here and release the shift key. Click on the edge of Brett Field and we've placed our move task. We'll leave the task options as is. We could consider allowing attacks. Normally a force as it moves is not allowed to initiate its own attacks. It's up for you then to issue those orders directly yourself. However, when you check the allow attacks option, the force itself can initiate an attack if it encounters enemy on its way. And this is quite handy if you don't want to necessarily focus on that particular force but still give it the option to be aggressive and launch its attacks. We won't do that just yet because it may end up in fact launching an attack onto Lomasville and we've got one already planned. So we'll leave that for now, but we'll monitor its progress and by the time it gets up to around the first waypoint, or if it encounters enemy beforehand, we can set that flag to true and then it will conduct its own attacks. Hit the spacebar to start the game running. We'll just change the unit information to show tasks. Note the 318th is moving into the 
um, final objective. Ooh. And we've just received a notice here that the 35th tank battalion has slipped its attack task again by 26 minutes. As you can see, the 35th has still some way to go. Um, it's being held up in here by enemy mortar fire uh, impacting on the zone here. So, we will just confirm that the new assault time is at 10.39, so we want our bombardment to be at 10.34. We'll just repeat what we did last time. Let's hit the Q key for the bring up the fire support tab. Um, we'll select the uh, bombardment task and we want to set its time for another 26 minutes. So, one, two, three, four, five, uh, plus one. Okay, so there we, we're right to go. Let's start the game running again. This message indicates we have an airstrike available. Airstrikes represent flights of fighter bombers that are available for you to commit to attack enemy ground units. When they're available, you'll see the airstrike button activated on the orders tab, along with the number of airstrikes available to you at that time. Airstrikes, or the aircraft for them, will stay in the area for approximately half an hour in which time you must commit them. If you don't commit them then they will be reassigned to your staff to be committed but the staff will only have a further five minutes to do so. After that they're lost. To commit the aircraft hit the airstrike button and select the target. Now in selecting our target, we want to give priority to the area being attacked and to the biggest enemy threat. So we'll hit the F4 button to show combat power again, and this looks like the, the best target. These ones here we haven't seen for a while, so most likely the enemy have pulled back into the town. They may be in the town. We could in fact hit the town and take potluck. However, the old adage, never back a probability against a certainty. We have an enemy unit here that we know of, and we should target it at the moment. Now, we'll hit the F5 button, and this will show its deployment. So this unit is actually moving, and we'll hit it again, the F5, and we'll show it's facing a direction. So it's moving towards this. So let's target the bottom uh, right corner there, so if the unit's moving in that direction we'll get him uh, within our bombardment zone which is around about 250 meters for a fighter bomber strike. Alright, let's hit the game running again. We'll just return it. It takes about a couple of minutes for the airstrike to come in. There we have it. going to pause for a second and um, we'll have a look at uh, the enemy's strength here. It's uh, certainly um, uh, not at full strength. When an aircraft is committed for the strike, any available and eligible enemy flak units can return fire and try and either force the aircraft to abort or to miss their target. In this case there wasn't any enemy anti-aircraft around, we heard no anti-aircraft fire uh, sounds so um, our aircraft had a free run. Let's start the game running again. bombardment has started and we can see our salt as well. Our bombardment has just lifted 
Our salt's about halfway, which is where we had anticipated it being. And we can see we've encountered some enemy and are now engaging them. going to stop here. We've just received a note that an enemy unit, i.e. the first company of the 12th Panzer Jager Battalion, has surrendered. Now this is the unit here in question. We can select a little cross icon representing its, uh, its demise and we can see that it's surrendered at that time. Note also that our old adversary, the uh, 12th Panzer Jager Battalion, um, company of uh, enemy Stugs is still around and we still estimate him at strength at six so he's still a potent adversary and we need to deal with him at the moment he looks like his route recovering so the chances are that he'll be very disorganized and as our armor pushes into the town he may even, in fact surrender or um, be routed off further stop again. We notice that up the top here the 51st has reached its waypoint and he is meeting opposition here. We may now select his move order and will allow it to conduct its own attacks. Note before, I, I mentioned about the um, Stug company, and it does look like, in fact, that it has been destroyed here. Uh, so that's well done. Uh, that is probably uh, the toughest nut to crack, and we've done so. Now, I've stopped it here because I've just noticed that the 51st is not going anywhere and we in fact have C Company which is defending here and I'm trying to work out well why is this occurring. Hitting the down arrow takes me to its first subordinate and lo well and behold this is A Company, 51st Infantry and note here that it's going to do a probe. A probe is an attack but one in which the force being committed will break off the attack if it looks like there's too much opposition. It's useful to probe when you don't know exactly what you're encountering. When you allow the 51st Battalion to conduct its own attacks it doesn't always mean that this will be with the whole force in this case it's determined that it's best done with a single company. A single company can mount an attack or a probe in a quicker time than the whole force and if you're uncertain as to what it is and it may only be a single unit then a probe by one of your companies is probably a good option. Okay so everything looks like it's on track let's start the game running again. Looks like our tank battalion is meeting some opposition here in the town. It might be time to lend some artillery support. We'll hit the Q key, bring up the tab, we'll select the 22nd, 
and we'll order a bombard on this position here. Notice our A company is conducting its attack. The report on the enemy now is good. It looks like our attack in the town has uh, overcome most opposition, although a company here has been routed. I'm going to speed the play up here. We have another airstrike. Let's choose a, a nice target for it. We'll hit the F4 key again. Uh, this enemy flak unit here uh, looks like a tempting target. Alternatively, we could uh, attack the enemy which have stymied our uh, A company. Uh, having a look at this now, a new enemy has been encountered here on the flank and the whole battalion has decided to put in an attack on it. However, this is not our prime goal here at the moment. Our prime objective is Lomas Vila. So let's support it and we'll choose to commit our airstrike on the end directly on the enemy flak unit. And it's had an immediate effect routing the enemy flak unit. The 35th Battalion is now occupying Wallace Vila and has secured the objective. We can see the green border around the icon. And we've received a notice to that effect as well. So well done. We've now successfully finished Phase 2. We've secured both the Steinbrook and the Lomas Vila objectives and we're well on the way to success. Now it's up to you to continue the drive to St. Vith. Remember, you have plenty of reserves coming along. Also remember, the enemy has an armoured column approaching from the west. So, protect your flanks. There's still a wealth of features yet to discover. But I hope that this has whet your appetite for more. And remember, the reference manual is there to assist and provide you with the information you need on any particular feature. And if you have a question, you can always post on the Battles from the Bulge forum on Matrix Games. I wish you well. Enjoy.